In this DreamHost review, I'll go through the most up-to-date information about everything you should know before you buy DreamHost, like advantages, disadvantages, support, performance, and overall, what type of websites benefit from using DreamHost the most. Last year, I looked more into the managed WordPress plans that DreamHost is offering. This time, I want to pay more attention to their shared web hosting plans. So, I'm going to grab a fresh account to see how a new user might experience DreamHost for the first time. I'll go with the unlimited shared hosting plan for $3.95 a month, which totals out to around $50 for one year. Quite cheap, actually. For comparison, a plan that offers similar features from SiteGround, a more premium web hosting provider, would cost you $135 while providers like Bluehost would cost you around $90, and a cheaper option like Hostinger is still $65. Keep in mind that I am testing all of these plans using discounts, you can get the exact same exclusive discounts by using the links in the description. But I want to be super transparent here and let you know that these links are actually affiliate links, meaning if you buy anything through them, I'll make a small commission. This is what allows me to improve the quality of my videos, keep the information unbiased and accurate. So thank you for your support and let's get back to this DreamHost review. Getting back on track, DreamHost is actually offering one of the cheapest one-year plans that are available right now. So if you're not looking to commit for long, you just need hosting for a year or a couple of months, DreamHost is gonna be the cheapest choice you can go with. After you're done with your purchase, you'll see this screen. There's no need to wait for activation or manual approval of your plan. All you need to do is wait around 3 minutes for the server space to be allocated for your plan. The control panel itself is easy to understand and definitely more beginner friendly than the standard C panel that comes with a lot of other web hosting providers. Right off the bat, you can see a huge blue button saying install WordPress now. Once clicked, it will start the installation process. You've gotta be patient here. For me, the installation took around 20 minutes and at one point, I even thought it was stuck. So I've contacted the support, they've responded almost immediately to their credit, but they explained that, well, basically it's working fine, it's just slow. So don't get worried if it's taking a bit longer than you would expect. Once it's finished, your website will look something like this. Just the default WordPress theme and you can work on the design or content yourself at this point, but it is already online and available for people to see. So the whole process from purchase to online took around 25 minutes. At the moment, it would seem that DreamHost is going through a little bit of a beta phase with their control panel. There's new functionality and new designs added every single day, but keep in mind that this is a work in progress. Even though they're trying to make everything easier for their users, the interface is a bit more glitchier than I would like. Once you've created a basic website, you'll still have this email set to button. Let's see what happens when I click that. Just as expected, it's a simplified way to create a professional looking email address. Keep in mind that this function is included with every single DreamHost plan. So I'm able to quickly create an email called emmet at emmetreviews.com. Nice and professional. You can also manage your email addresses by clicking on Mailbox Manager. Here you'll be able to change the password, set auto removal of old emails to save space, and even set up an autoresponder, so if someone messages your business, you can automatically reply with a message like thanks for contacting me or receipts for purchases, basically stuff like that. If you want to actually check your email box to see what kind of emails you've got, you can do so by clicking this link and logging in. The mailbox itself looks modern and you'll probably have no problems communicating using it since DreamHost just updated it. I've definitely used older solutions in the past and I had no problems, so I'm sure this will work just fine. If this seems complicated, don't worry. As soon as you go through these setup steps, you can actually reach your email box by clicking on go to webmail straight from your dashboard. But if you don't want to use DreamHost every single time you need to access your email box, I actually have a guide on how you can set up that to work with Gmail that you can find right here. Moving on, what additional settings do you get to play with when choosing DreamHost? Well, clicking on domains, websites and manage, you get access to your site-specific features. Here you can change the PHP version to the latest one. DreamHost does offer PHP 7.4, which is the newest version at the moment, 
so your website will be fastest using this version. You can also manage your website files manually and see when your free SSL certificate expires. But don't worry about that too much as DreamHost does renew your SSL certificates completely automatically and for free as well. This is true for every single domain you buy at DreamHost. By the way, an SSL certificate adds this green lock next to your domain name, encrypting your website and making the connection secure. It's a mandatory security feature that's highly necessary for pretty much every single website. So for me personally, this is the most interesting part of the review, the performance, because in essence, it's the main component of the service that you're gonna be paying for. Everything else is just a nice bonus or simple gift wrapping. To start things off, I need a baseline. So I jumped into my WordPress dashboard to see what my auto-install software came with. As you can see, it did come with some plugins that are deactivated by default, so I'll just uninstall all of them and have a simple, empty website. By the way, what I find to be really disappointing is that DreamHost, unlike A2 Hosting or SiteGround, more speed-focused web hosting companies, don't offer any custom plugins or software to help you optimize your website. DreamHost relies on third-party plugins that you'll need to install yourself and learn to use yourself if you want to optimize your website for the best possible performance. I'll also change the theme to the one I always use for testing. I don't exactly know why, I just find it more appealing than the other ones. So this is how the website looks currently, pretty much just a static page. Let's see how fast it loads. Just to get on the same page, I'll be using a tool called GT Metrics. It will allow me to measure the loading speed of my website with relative ease. I've did two tests to show you a cool little example of how much impact your data center location can have. If we test from Dallas, USA, I get a loading speed of 0.7 seconds, which is incredibly fast and a really, really good result. However, if we would switch to Vancouver, Canada, the loading speed drops to 1.3 seconds, almost twice as slow. This happens because DreamHost only has two data centers where they store all of your website information. And they're both located in the United States, one in the West Coast and one in the East Coast. So naturally, the further that information needs to travel between the server and the user, the longer it will take for that user to reach your website. That's why I always recommend choosing data centers that are gonna be closest to your user base, not you, because they're the ones that are actually gonna be visiting your website. And of course, there are ways to mitigate this by using content delivery networks, but that's a topic for another video. The main takeaway from this is, if your customers are not from the United States, you might want to consider another web hosting provider that has data centers all across the world, like Hostinger or SiteGround. I'll leave reviews and discount links for both providers in the description that I recommend you check out after watching this video. Just to keep things fair, for all further testing, I'll be using the United States servers because that's where DreamHost is the strongest. But enough of this empty website nonsense. Let's simulate an actual website and send some users to it to see how DreamHost reacts to a real life website scenario. First of all, and I recommend you do this as well with your websites, go into the appearance tab and delete all of the pre-installed themes that you're not using. Even if you're not using resources, they will still slow your website down by taking up space. After that's done, I've added some flair to my website and simulated something that could pass for an actual website to see how fast DreamHost is able to load it. As expected, the design elements slowed my website down, but not by much. DreamHost was still able to load my site in 2.3 seconds, which is actually a completely fine result for the price that I'm paying. Finally, I want to be thorough here, so I'll use a service called the K6 Cloud and send some virtual users on my website to simulate actual users. This is gonna give us a better idea of how DreamHost performs when it's under load. I've set up a super simple test to send 50 virtual users onto my website over a 5 minute period, seeing how the response times change with more and more users on my website. After the test was done, the software didn't find any performance problems. The website was able to handle this load just fine. To understand this graph, you need to pay attention to the blue line. As you can see, it doesn't move up as the test goes on. It just jumps up and down periodically. This indicates that higher user counts didn't phase the performance of my website. In fact, the biggest spike in performance was with the lowest amount of users. 
By this point, it's quite clear. DreamHost is offering really cheap web hosting if you buy for a shorter period of time while still offering competitive performance. But what kind of other advantages can you expect if you decide to choose DreamHost? For starters, you get a free automated migration tool, meaning if you already have an existing website somewhere else, DreamHost makes it easy to transfer your website to their hosting service, so let's test it out. I have a website called extremelycheapdomain.com and it's currently hosted with another web hosting provider called Hostinger. Here's how my website looks. So let's say I want to transfer this website from Hostinger to DreamHost. How will I go about it? Well, according to DreamHost, it's really simple. All I need to do is go to my old web hosting provider, in this case it's Hostinger, and access the WordPress panel. Then install a plugin called DreamHost Automated Migration. Once that's done, I need to go back into DreamHost, get my unique ID from the dashboard and paste it in the plugin. And that's it, everything else is done automatically. In real time, I had to wait around 10 minutes for this, I've sped it up for the video here, but after the process was done, my website was fully migrated. All of the files that were on my Hostinger website are now on my DreamHost website. And the best part is that you can use this tool completely free to migrate your website if you're hosting on DreamHost. Another notable advantage that DreamHost has over other providers is that they allow you to buy plans monthly. No need to pay for one year or two years upfront if you just need a site for a couple of months. Most other web hosting providers require you to buy for a minimum period of one year. While DreamHost doesn't have any unique disadvantages, they still share the same disadvantages as most other web hosting companies, mainly the increase in price after first purchase, but not with every single plan as I understand it. If this sounds confusing, it is. It's super confusing, but let me try to do my best to explain this. Okay, as you can see here, we have the prices for shared starter and shared unlimited plans which are $2.59 and $3.95 respectively. But these are promotional prices. That means you only get this price on your first purchase. There's this little question mark next to the shared unlimited plan that explains that this plan renews at $7.95 instead of $3.95. But if we would go into my dashboard right now, you can see that my plan would renew at $9.95 a month. Long story short, more likely than not, you'll need to pay more after your initial purchase, when it's time to renew your plans. Because the first time it's a promotional price, the second time it's the regular renewal price. If you're looking for a web hosting company that doesn't have these sneaky price increase tactics, I recommend you check out InterServer. I actually have a review of InterServer on my channel, right here. Another notable disadvantage is their support team. Currently, the chat is disabled altogether, but even when it's online, it's not 24-7. You can only get chat support at certain working hours. Finally, should you get DreamHost for your website? Well, in my honest opinion, if you're someone who's looking for shorter term web hosting for a small to mid-sized website, the DreamHost shared web hosting plans are actually excellent. And as a company, DreamHost is still among my favorites. They're an independent company and they're more focused on users rather than profit margins. The prices are the lowest in the market for short term hosting. The performance is on par with more expensive plans from their competitors and you get a lot of modern features like an up to date control panel, free migration tools and an SSL certificate. If you're ready to migrate to DreamHost or start a completely new project using DreamHost, use the links down below and get a significant discount. But if you're unsure about what type of web hosting you need for your project, feel free to check out my channel where I do all sorts of stuff related to web hosting. If you don't find the answer there, feel free to leave a comment down below. I try to read and answer every single one and help you out the best I can. But for now, thanks for watching, good luck with your websites and I'll see you in the next video.